Hi, everybody. It's Maria from What's Story with Maria. How's it going? We want to welcome you to our show. We I got to tell you, tonight is uh, Tuesday, uh, uh, April 9th, 2024. We are coming to you live from New York City. And also, our guests are zooming in from um, beautiful Los Angeles area. They're closer to Leo tonight than they will be to me. But this is the beauty of technology. That's the beauty of technology. The, the difficulty of technology, it's sometimes it doesn't always work. So we're having issues tonight with our with my Facebook uh, page. We usually broadcast from that Facebook page as well as What's the Story with Maria, which is where we're broadcasting from right now. Um, but we are um, we're going to come live. I'm trying to do two things at once. We're coming to you live from the What's the Story with Maria page. So just hang on there, and then I will broadcast it to um, my other page. Okay, so if uh, if you're checking in, just uh, let us know that you're here. I know most people watch us on the Maria Gentili page, and we're just trying. I'm just trying to get out of that page, and uh, so many things happening. But anyway, my loves. Okay, so yesterday was the eclipse, as you know, and I don't know if anybody else watched um, where people watched it from, but I watched it with my. Um, oh, there it is. What's the story with Maria? Okay, hold on a second. Um, Leah, why don't you zoom in and join me for a second? Danielle says, happy Tuesday, Maria and Leo working on YouTube. Fantastic. Hey there. Oh, my God. This is so great because John and Lori are there. All right. So I'm trying to get out of this. We have a lot of uh, technical stuff happening tonight. So just hang in, hang in, hang in, hang in. Okay, good. We're there. We're here. Okay, good. Okay. So many crazy things happening. All right. Anyway, we are coming to you live. Oh, there it is. Okay, great. Hi, everybody. Oh, boy. Crazy, crazy, crazy thing. So I would suspect, maybe Danielle can help us out with this. Leo mentioned that we are probably Mercury is in retrograde, and that's why all this stuff is happening. Mercury, Mercury, be kind to what's the story with Maria G. Thank you, Danielle. If anybody has the power, I know you do. Um, Okay, so that's not happening from my phone. I'm going to come over here to my other computer and try to share it. So we do want to tell you about something really exciting that's happening uh, Sunday, October 28th. Our friend Lynn Portish, genius. I got like 800 things open right now. Hey, she, okay, here it is. Let me see if I can share it from here. She is, Leo, put up that little... Um, Put up that I'm little trying. Hold on. Okay. Oh. We, Lynn is going to be in Mineola. Let me see if I can share this. I'm trying to share it now. That's okay. You know what? I'm not going to, we're going to forget about that. I'm going to forget about this too. Okay, so it seems to me like a lot of people are on. So let's say hi to our friends, uh, and then we'll go back to the sharing Lynn's uh, upcoming thing. John Pietero has joined us. He says, hey, Lori and I are with you. I love that. Ed Kutu, happy Tuesday. Hey, Eddie, I saw you and your guy watching the eclipse yesterday. What a great picture that was. And uh, uh, Lori says, we are here. I'm so glad you're here. Peter Feliciano of Peter Feliciano Fine Jewelry has joined us, Ola, Maria, and Leo. And Peter, I loved your um, your ad with the eclipse. That was so cool with the jewelry and the eclipse. That was a really cool ad. I think I saw it on Instagram. So let me see. And Danielle is joined. Rena Cunyali Berge, my cousin from Massachusetts. Uh, hello and happy Tuesday, beautiful people. Hi, sweetheart. Yeah, we're having a little bit of an issue tonight. So what are you going to do? There's nothing you can do tonight. We are a little kooky. 
So we want to say thank you to everybody for checking in with us. Um, and um, we're going to forge ahead, I think. So, Leo, can you pull up that Lynn Portis thing? I'm trying to. No, oh, okay. So, oh, all right. There it is. Yes, our stream has given us a little bit of a hard time and a little bit of a hard time connecting to what's the story with Maria. So, um, but all that said, we're going to forge ahead. And we're going to bring on our guests very, very soon because there's two of them. And, uh, okay, there she is. So Lynn Portis, genius, our friend, is coming to us. Um, she's going to be live at, um, what is the name of the place? It's Casariano. Casariano's Italian restaurant, and that is in Jericho Turnpike, 348 East Jericho Turnpike, Mineola, Long Island. That is Sunday, um, Sunday, April 28th. And I believe she is playing live from 6.30 to 9.30. We will remind you, and I will certainly put it on my page. We love our Lynn. And if you're out in the Long Island area, which I know a lot of you are, or at least close by, or you can take, let's let's make a plan to meet out there and, um, and hang out with Lenny. I think that would be the way to spend that afternoon. How wonderful. I, th I think they forgot. The word genius on there. I oh, don't yes, see it. Doesn't, Where's that? doesn't say Lynn Porter's genius. <laughs> we know she is. Um, you know who was a genius? What? Shakespeare oh, was a genius. G. All right, so here is our calendar, our nothing but the apron calendar. If you don't know what this is, um, our friends come together every year around October and submit pictures of themselves with nothing but the apron. And what is the apron? It's our What's the Story with Maria Go Ahead, Keep Eating apron. Because, you know, we do have a food section of our show called Go Ahead, Keep Eating. And uh, so they wear nothing but the apron. This is G. Enrique, and they are wearing the apron and holding a skull because they celebrate the same birthday as Shakespeare. So there's your Shakespeare reference. So, G, thank you. G is often with me and Zach at uh, the Duplex on Wednesday nights. It's either Sarah Glassman or G Enrique. And sometimes we have other people. Um, so, that is G in, the, in our calendar. It's only 10 bucks. I still have a few left if you want them. Let me know. I'll get them right out to you. They're really fun. And here are <clears throat> all our people on the back, all our months. We have some real hotties in this. And uh, next year, I already have five months filled. Can you believe it? So we will need your pictures by October if you want to be in it. Let me know you want to be in it. I'll get an apron out to you. What? I just remembered something, too. What? Fourth, Fourth of July is coming up pretty soon. Before we get yeah. to aprons, we need some of our uh, – we can start our campaign for our families, immigrant families, for our um, yes. video for Fourth of July. Yeah, we need to do that right away. Right away we need to do that. Okay, so thank you for reminding me. If you, this is great that this came up. We made a video, Leo and I, uh, and a bunch of our friends. Uh, I wrote a song with Wilty and Hall a couple years ago called This Is My America. And it's a song about immigration, and it's really, a, a, I'm very proud of it. Uh, my family is from somewhere else, and most of my friends' families are from somewhere else, whether it's uh, your first generation or second. And so I asked a bunch of my friends to take pictures of them, of their family members that migrated here, as they were when they migrated, and, and now what their family has grown into. And it's really very special. So if you want to be part of that project, our immigration project, the This Is My America video project, we're going to be making a second video with the song, if you want to be part of it, if your family came from somewhere else and you want to tell us about that, just reach out to me uh, at Maria Gentili at AOL or write on my Facebook page and let me know that you want to do that. And I will make sure, I will make sure that you uh, and I connect and Leo and we get that done because we're going to redo the video. We're always going to keep the original. We'll just keep adding to it. And we were on um, New York One with uh, Ron Lee. Uh, in July. It was so great. By the way, happy birthday to Ron Lee. Today is Ron Lee, our friend, Ron Lee. He is also does, um, he's an anchor person on um, New York One, and he's great and just a loving, wonderful person. 
So happy birthday to our friend Ron Lee. And uh, he, maybe we can get him on the show. I mean, I think he'd do it. I don't know if he's allowed to do it, but if he's allowed to do it, um, you know, I don't, you know how those contracts are. But if he is allowed to do it, maybe we can get him to zoom in one night. How fun would that be? So anyway, we had a segment on with him. And you can find all that stuff on my website, which is mariagentilly.com. Okay, Leo, I think the time has come. I think the time has come to zoom in our friends and see what's happening there. We've got to talk about that catechism. Yeah, we really do, because I think we all need a little redemption right about now. <laughs> and, um, Hi, Andy. So we have two. Andy Prasky has joined us. Hi, Andy. And also I saw Jill, uh, uh, your friend Jill, Jill Rosen. Rosen yep. just jumped in. Hi, Andy went to see a really cool show the other night, and I'm dying to hear how it went. So are we ready to zoom in our wonderful friends that happen, to be, make, they are are ready. that happen to be married to each other? Although when I met them, they I met them separately. And look what love has brought us now. Hi, my friends. This is Denise Fennell and Rick Pasqualone, or Rick Pasqualone and Denise Fennell, depending on where you are. You right? Know. I mean, first of all, hi, Maria. Hi, my mm. love. How are you? Is it like wild? It is wild. Yeah. You know, mm. I've been thinking about, I think about you guys a lot because I... You know, we've all known each other a long, long time. Right. I mean, I was in Tony and Tina's in, in 91 yeah. to 98. So, Rick, when I was in Tony and Tina's, you were Tony. I was. You yeah. were Tony. You will always be Tony to me. I mean, that's just the way it was. Although there were many great, wonderful Tonys after that. Yeah. Rick was my first Tony. So, I always saw Tony as that. You know, you were my, that's it. You were the prince. You were the <laughs> Tony prince to me. Uh, so, I, um... So that was so cool. And then you went off and did other things. And then, D, you came in. What year did you come in? I think, you know, it, it's it's hard to figure out, but I started in Boston. Yes. So I came, like, right after, right after Boston. So I want to say, like, somewhere around 98. I started downtown. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's where I was, too. So right as I was leaving, I think. I think, I think we were 10 years in, in, in casting. Yeah. So there was always a bunch of casts coming through because there were a lot of different companies and you were in the Boston company. Yeah. I know there was like a San Francisco company. A lot of people came from there. Uh, Justine did and, and Lara and um, Mark Nasser was everywhere, but he would go to different companies and then come back in. And so there was a lot of that going on, but it was always such an amazing experience. And so many of us, and most of us have stayed really, really good friends and, or even if we don't talk to each other, we're like connected forever. Because that's such an experience. Because nobody can ever understand that until you like live that. Right. Like, when, it, when it was magic. And, you know, to me, Tony and Tina's was such a wonderful playground and such a creative group of people. And I'm so grateful to it. Yeah, me too. And we, I know we're all grateful to Joe and Karen Corcoran. Yeah. Aaron Salini and Joe. And Mark came to Boston. I mean, like, my world's collided. It, it, my world's have completely collided. Yeah. So it's wild. I'm like, okay. So now, Rick, uh, there's, you know, there's a lot of stuff that you've done in between then and now. That you're kind of like, you fly under the radar. You're like, that's the kind of guy you are. You kind of like, Take a little bit of a, I let my work do the talking, right? <laughs> I mean, that's how I perceive you. But you've done a ton of commercials. You do a lot of voiceovers. Yeah. And you're like you're like a, a working actor, right? God bless, yeah. Yeah. So tell us about some of the stuff you've done, because I was trying to find a few little things there. but And then we'll go back to D because I know D's got a bunch of things that's going on, too. So you, as let's talk about just the stuff, like the commercials and the acting stuff that you did. After well, before, before we say that, as you were as you were dialing in, and we were talking about our our long standing friendships in Tony and Tina's wedding, Alan Steele is calling me on the other line. Are you kidding me? I, yeah, and I'm like, I'm on with Maria Gentile. He's like, this, that's we're, that's we're, unbelievable. We're dead, we're dead, what's happening? We're, we're, is he out in L.A. as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of you folks are, right? A bunch of us came out. Alan came out uh, with 
uh, Glenn Toronto, right? Mikey Creo, Louis Martini. We were all living in the same building, Maria. No, we all. It was like Melrose Place for Italians. Oh my God! I love that. It was like that. it was mozzarella place. <laughs> I love that. So you guys just like I mean these are the most Italian guys you can imagine. So you all moved into the same building. We all moved into the same building in Hollywood. We thought we were living like kings because we were we were paying like five hundred dollars a month. We had a swimming pool, a gym. Meanwhile, we're in the middle of like the most disgraziat neighborhood in Hollywood. But we thought we were <laughs> we we thought we were living the life, you know. Of course, it's sunny every day. Yay. Oh my God, I love that story. I can just imagine if someone had filmed you guys out there. Imagine, thank God, thank yeah, God, there were no true. cell phones because we'd all be in a lot. I know, and it was before Facebook. Also, thank God. Yeah, yeah, yeah my God. So, but so. Rick, then you started getting into commercials and voiceovers and all that. And how did that? Uh, I, so, tell us about that because I've seen you on a bunch of commercials. Yeah, I was, I was, I was actually doing. Uh, I was doing commercials and stuff in New York. That's that's how I got started when I was yeah. when I was doing Tony and Tina's. Uh, I was trying to get uh, an agent. I was trying to get with this agency, and they were, you know, they were they were they weren't really committing to me. But then they came and saw the show, and uh, you know, and at the time, you know, what a great opportunity to be doing an off-Broadway show, you know, every night of the week, and you could invite people down and see work. Right. And they basically said, like, we don't really know what to do with you, but we'll take a shot, you know. Okay. And uh, I didn't really know what I was doing, but you know, um, just kind of dove in. Yeah. And, and started to work, and um, and then years later, you know, realized you know, I had no business being in this business. I, I didn't know what I was doing, but you know, you figure it out as you go. And you, I don't think there's any way to know what you're doing. I, no. I mean, you just are in it. Like I think if you really are an actor, like we say we are, and I believe that we are real actors, you have to just be in your body. And in your character or whatever you're doing at that moment like i don't think there's any real way yeah you could take a bunch of classes you can you know meditate you can read you can learn other languages you can work on dialects all that stuff but i think and i and i going back to what denise said about tony and tina's wedding i think that was one of the best classrooms we all took because it was like seven improv classes a week there were swings all the time, so you and all this different stimuli thrown at you. You had to not just fly by the seat of your pants every night, but you had to take what you were given and create comedy from it. Yeah, and I, I, think, I, uh, I took that experience when I came to LA, and I I could walk into any casting office, and and they would throw stuff at me and, and just go, "Can well, can you try?" It? Of course, you know, because we've been doing that, like you said, we were doing that eight shows a week, right. Yeah, I can take a curveball. I can hit the curve. I can go opposite field. You know, right, right. Oh boy, I know. And uh, by the way, speaking of opposite field, did you ever play on the Tony and Tina uh, softball team? I think you did, right? Was the, yeah, we we were the one. Me and Louis Martini were the, we were we were the ones that that we were the captains of that team when we were. Oh uh, my god! Remember, we had the bowling team too. Oh my God! Yeah, because I was on the I was on the the uh, both of those things, and I'm I'm like I know Rick was on that team. Yeah, I still have Louis, my pink, of course, still Louis. my pink shirt, my pink bowling shirt. Look, I still have my I wore my twenty eighteen shirt great. tonight. That's, That's a great. great one. I love the black and red. Yeah, from the softball. This is what we had yeah. for softball shirts. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, out in the sun, you know, black is so cooling. So that's what we had. <laughs> but oh my God, we had a lot of fun, and the and the bowling league was great. That was um, a great part of that too. It was, it was we, you know, it's like we couldn't get enough of each other during the day, so we had to hang out at night. We had to hang out at bowling. We had to hang out at softball. That was our entire social. Day. We were together all the time. It's true. I, I mean, you were together every single day. I think, except what would we have Mondays off? I think or something. Yeah, Mondays off, and then we would probably hang out on our days off too. Well, right. I would, I would go to the beach with Tony Gloria. I'm like, can we not like yeah one day? And then once uh, once Anthony Barilli came into the show, then he had three of cups, and everybody would go there. There was always something going on, you know. Or we were at Gus's. Remember yeah. Gus's on downstairs? Oh, listen, Maria, Jesus, you come to my place here. Nobody orders anything. Everybody, everybody drinks water over here. Well, you guys are killing me. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> God, Gus! Remember how Gus always wanted to be in the show? He would come. And Gus <laughs> was wish. in the show with us. Oh my God! But yeah. do you remember he would come upstairs from the back, 
yeah. staircase and just want to be in the show. He would just do, he would just start doing Brando. We, we would just do dueling Brandos at the back of the room. It had nothing to do with that. Why is Tony standing with the guy that makes the ZD and doing Brando impressions? That's no. Oh there. my God! Speaking of ZD, so Gus used to cook. We had. If you've never been to Tony and Tina's wedding, what it was was. It was a, a, an interactive show where there's a real wedding going on, and there, uh, Rick was the groom, and at a different time, Denise was the bride. Uh, and you also were sister, right? You were a great sister, right? That's what I, well, I started as a stripper, then New York, I had to be sister because I had the Boston accent. And that was really hard, man. That, that was my biggest challenge coming to wait, New York. Wait, I forgot you started as the stripper. And you were in Boston, yeah. And then when I came to New York, they were like, you know, it was such a shift in casting. It was such an interesting time, and I, I don't know what I was thinking, but somehow I ended up the nun. I'm like, I'm very confused here <laughs> with this play, and how I mean, that, that was the way it went. It just was. I had a ball, but you know what? The same thing with me. I understudied all, you know, all the bridesmaids and, and sister and uh, Loretta. You know, it's like, bad. that's the way it was. You just, I said, I don't care. Just get me in. Get me in the room. I don't care. I'll wear anything. I'll be anybody. <laughs> well, that's what it was. And, and you would walk up the stairs yeah. and the board would be there. Yeah. So you'd come into your, your job, which was, uh, you know, a show, and you'd check in by looking at the board. And it would say who was who that day. So people would get moved around a lot because someone was out and they had to move shift around. But you didn't know who you were until that day lots of times. I mean, if you were the set, like a set. But even that, sometimes people would have to bop around according to whose dress fit who. You know? Yes. And to, uh, that was the other part. I, I, I had a very real come to Jesus moment when I was in the dressing room once. I'm like, I'm never going to understudy Tina right now. I, I, I'm i too tall. Because of the dresses, right? Depending. Who but was also, Tina before you? Was it Justine? So Justine had just left, and then it was um, oh Susan. my God, Marilyn Mutterese. Right. I, it was such. It, I came in at such an interesting time, but I had seen the show right after we opened in Boston. I flew out. Um, her advice of uh, Luke Polanka and um, Luca. Oh my God. Yeah, he he was like, you got to see the show in New York City. Just go see it. Like figure it out. So when we opened the show in Boston, I made enough money um, dancing on the table with Michael Perry as Madeline that we used the money to fly to New York to see. Oh my him. god! <laughs> and you guys were still smoking on the dais, and yes. I, mean, I thought Debbie Bucciatori was going to just punch my face in from the second we arrived at the church. <laughs> oh my it was god! Old, authentic to me. She, was she Donna back then? Yes. Yeah, she was a rough Donna. She was it was tough. so good, though. She was so good. Everybody was so good. Justine was Tina at the time. Um, yeah. You were Marina. I, I mean, it yeah. was a, it was truly, and and, it, and Susanna was Maddie. And right yeah. after that, she uh, Susanna's in L.A. too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and my kept great creative moments, great synergy. I had no idea what I was learning or how it would all come into play later in my life, but it sure did. So speaking of which, now you went into another improv show. You do uh, the, the late night catechism, right? Yeah. Wow. So that's been going on a long time, Denise, off and yeah. on, right? Almost. The show's been running now. It ran off probably, and it, it shared a space with Tony and Tina's at one moment. So it's been running 30 years, Mary Pat. And, and her plays are amazing, and an incredible series and it's just it, it's, it's playing everywhere it's unreal to me that this character and, and it was right under my nose the whole time you know when we were doing the show up on 46th street we were sharing the church um so we would go in at 7 30 and then when we would leave to go down the street for the reception late night catechism would perform in the same space so occasionally mary pat and i passed each other as tina oh. and um and his sister, yeah. you know, she had a lot to say to me, and I had a lot to say back. Wow. And then she, we went to a theater conference together, and she was like, you know, I was dressed as Tina, and she was dressed as sister, and we did a, we did a showcase together. And shortly thereafter, she was like, you should do my play. And I was wow. like, well, it's an undertaking, but she's, it's really been one of the greatest gifts. It's such a great role to play. Um, 
I'm having a ball with it, and it's really no. The Irish version. I was the. I was the. I want to know. That's what I was just gonna say. Now it was St. Patty's Day. This is hysterical, and you did the St. Patty. Tell me. Tell us about that. So, you know, Houston, amazing stages, theater, amazing. We had been working on um, a new version for Late Night Catechism that had to do with St. Patrick's Day. Somehow, um, Mary Pat and I end up writing partners on it. Um, I, you know, if you notice, I hyphenated my name and told Mary Pat right away that Ricky was going to be involved because I've learned, if I've learned anything in this business, Maria, like, you know, sometimes you stay in your lane, but you can just see what's going on in the road. But yeah. there's a lot of really talented people around me and um, great writers. And Ricky's an incredible writer. And we found ourselves working with Mary Pat to write this show. So the Irish Catechism was really special for the both of us because we were, you know, we were credited as writers on the, for the first time the Catechism series. And Mary Pat flew to Texas to see it. And it just became such a contagious show. And I've done a lot of interactive theater, but I knew from night number one, we had written into the second half of the play that we were going to have a parade, right? Because... How do you celebrate St. Patrick's Day? A parade. Right. What is a parade? It's a religious procession. So we do all the research and we decide if there's going to be a parade, if sister's going to have a parade, she should be the grand marshal. Of course. That's it. We wrote it as a play. That was the objective of the second half of the play. And then she leads the class in a parade around the classroom. When I said it, the first night the show opened, I saw people in the audience kind of shift. They really believed me that I was campaigning to be the Grand Marshal of the St. Patrick's Day Parade in Houston. But there was also something contagious about it where they were like, you should be. And why not? And I was like, you know what? Why not? And and then through the course of the run, we were just asking people to share videos and they started sharing like so many videos with the Parade Commission in Houston. Some guys like, are you a nun in a play? Like, what is going on? Everybody's sending me messages about you should be the grand marshal of my St. Patrick's Day parade. I was like, so people, they were like commissioning for you, like campaigning, campaigning. Oh my god, campaigning. So that's what was so special about it. And the theater, right off the bat, you know, when when Ricky and I came up with the idea, we thought, why not invite every audience member to actually walk in the parade with us? That's sort of how it started. That's incredible. The theater said yes and put a QR code in the program so people could actually sign up to march. It just kind of took on a, a life of its own and art became life or life became art. We weren't quite sure what was happening. Well, but. just like Tony and Tina's, the, it blurs. It yeah. it comes together. Like, so let me just, for one second, my fan, friend Andy Prasky, who happens to be, a, like, he's a uh, director, he directs film, he does documentaries. He's a real cool guy. He says, I was freaked out when I approached the church during Tony and Tina's and a groomsman patted me down looking for a gun. Like, he still remembers that. And Andy, what year was that? I bet it was like in the 90s. That might, Rick, you might have been one of those guys. Like, people still remember that. I, I, people all the time say, oh my God, I went to that show and this happened or that happened or, you know, so it's that. And, and you know what else? The stories I love. Rick, you'll remember this, I think, because D, I think, by the t Lynn might have already been gone. I'm not sure, but <clears throat> Lynn's kids—they were six, five, and four, or something like. You remember? Rick remembers. So Lynn sometimes couldn't find a babysitter, and she would bring her kids to the show while she was playing the show. So I would grab Jackie and bring her everywhere with me, and Sharon would grab Nicole because Nicole was the most scrappy, and Sharon was so scrappy. And then they would put John. He was four. They would, I don't know where they got this little mini tuxedo, but they put him in a tux and the groomsmen would take him around. You just make it work. Exactly. So on the nights that our, they were our kids now would come to the show, they were part of the show. Like it's like, so it's going back to what you're talking about with the audience <sighs> becoming part of that whole thing. So, so full, full I, circle, I we brought our kids now to the show. They, you know, we had, we were developing it here in our living room, and they, they just think we're, you know, we're just the wackiest nutballs. <laughs> and we're like, we're going to go to Texas, and you're actually going to see 
what we do for a living. And it was the first time they had seen her perform as the nun. Yeah. They were part of the show that night. They were part of the parade. And they were just like, oh, okay. I mean, Houston brings it. Yeah? I, I mean, this theater, Stages Theater, is exceptional. The community down there, the way they support art and the stuff that's being developed at this theater, it's really such a great, it's such a positive experience. We're, we're having a ball. I love that. Now, speaking of theater, I want to shift over to Rick. Rick, you did a show about Elvis um, in the last few years, right? Yeah. So Lynn, you, Lynn Portis was involved. Lynn, Lynn helped us with the music. Oh, wow. Okay, so tell me, tell us about that. And was oh, that also in Houston? No, that was our first, that was our first real artistic collaboration. Yeah. And you did, uh, Denise, you wrote that as well? I didn't. I was working with um, Robert Watt and Bobby Watman from the Culture Club. And he had, I met him when we produced Birdie's Bachelorette Party at his right. nightclub. And then um, I went out to Vegas with him and produced some stuff out there. And I had come back to New York and we produced Totally True for the Time Machine with um, Susanna was the director, Janine Molinari was the choreographer. It was exceptional. It was it mm. was amazing. And um, so we've we've worked together quite a bit. Yeah, and so t let's go back to the Elvis show. Tell me about that, Rick. So we we were we had met doing the reboot of Tony and Tina's. This is twenty fourteen. Um, she said, you know, uh, I'm developing this show with a friend of mine, and I had met Bobby, and we. We, we hit it off and, you know, we're both Elvis fans and we're, you know, just like cool. And he's, she's like, you know, we want to read this script. We don't know where it is. Maybe maybe you can just like read it for us. I'm like, well, if we're going to read it, like, why don't we just do it? Like, I'll bring my guitar. We'll sit. We're like, yeah, OK, well, sure. So like from one afternoon sitting in Bobby's living room in New York and I read through the script and, uh, you know, was just kind of making stuff up on the fly. And we're like, yeah, OK, this 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 can work. And they called me and they were like, how serious are you about Ricky? And I was like, <laughs> I mean, like. She's like, serious how? Serious how? Like, serious how? Like, and like, you know, like, do you want to work with him? And I was like, yeah, he's super talented. And they're like, we really love him, like, actually for the Elvis character in the play. And I was like, wow, okay. You know, so what started out as a reading for Ricky turned into him just killing it. And then being Elvis in a play that I was brought on as a producer on, which was so wild and fun for us at the time. And you guys were not dating them? Not really at that time. We, I think maybe you had special feelings I, I think, for me. Yeah, I might have had special feelings. Well, can you blame her, Rick? You are very handsome. Oh. I mean, it let's just call it. Your life, right? Everybody had a crush on Rick in the show, even the lesbians. Everybody had a crush on Rick. Uh, How can uh, you not? Leo, what are you playing? Sounds um, like girls just want to have fun. And also, Lynn said, "Channeling the King." That was the name. Yeah. And and that was such a great opportunity too, because then if you talk about worlds colliding. Like here, all of a sudden, I'm in a room with Lynn Portis and Ricky. And bless her heart, because yeah. you know, here's the thing. You know, we 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 started to develop this show, and uh, there's me. So the, it was a two. It was two. I played two characters. I played this unsuccessful insurance salesman from Long Island who suddenly can channel Elvis Presley. And because he can channel Elvis, all of a sudden his insurance business takes off. And now he's forced to deal with the... Look the at how cool that is. Thing. Yeah. And he's having a real, like, trying to figure out why is this happening to me? And, you know, when you take on Elvis, you forget, you know, because he's become almost a parody, but... Young Elvis, man, he was, oh he, my had, God. he had a powerful, beautiful voice. He could move. I mean, it's a big, big thing. And even though we were like, this is not an Elvis tribute show, I really wanted to. I'm a huge fan. I really wanted to. Do yeah, me show. too. I love and Elvis. God bless, too. And God bless Lynn Portis because she, yeah. she really helped. I, like, I went into training camp. I like, I really have to, you know, anybody can do an Elvis impression for about 15 seconds, but to do it for an hour and a half, I was like, I yeah. got training. Yeah, that's like intense, right? Yeah, it was, but it was great. It was a fun show, and we just had a ball, and it was just, it was just a great, great time. But did you, but you folks remember, like when we were kids, how our, what, especially the women, 
the women were crazy about Elvis. Like they were the was, same way, Maria, on tour. Like women were screaming at Ricky, like yes. ripping, ripping his. Really, I love that. Like, what are we doing? I'm in Alamogordo, New Mexico. Now, Ricky and I are on the road together to produce this thing. Because, you know, being on the road with theater is a wild ride within itself. Like, yeah. so many people think we just show up at the theater and it's, like, spectacular. But some of these places are in the middle of nowhere. They're the most beautiful theaters in the world, but you got to commit to get there. And, right, right. And we had Ricky's, you know, costume. I mean, I, I called the show. Like, I was the tech. Really? Yeah. You know, like, and, it, and it's so wild to be in those experiences with him, but creatively, like, we both love that. We live for that. So Yeah. Well, that's it. Like, you know, both of you are the same in that even though you came from different places, you did, had different experiences getting to where, but you're both the same in your commitment to theater. Like, nobody could say that that that's not a truth Both and, when I, had a, and when I had a nervous and when I had a nervous breakdown <laughs> the night before opening night she was like put your put your tight pants on and get out there like what are you doing what do you, you mean put your high heels and your tight pants on and you get out there what do you mean I, you can't do it that's not an option get out of here it's happening so <laughs> wow what are you saying you know? Andy Prasky says things were done in the show that you can't do today. The serve, oh, oh going back to Tony Chase, yeah. servers would reach into a big bowl of salad with their bare hands. Like, it's wrong. yeah, it was crazy. It was insane. Going it's back wrong. to that, it's so next level that like nothing, like nothing surprises me. I feel like I, I can almost do anything. Like, yeah, it's well because we were thrown into different situations all the time and you like you like you said you don't have the option of like uh, saying I, I am not doing this you have to stay in it you're on a ride people would, and then we're going to talk about the bride you get on a ride people would ask me about this sh like oh how do you do that i go you get on a ride at the beginning of the show and you cannot get off of the ride until it's over until the last person walks out right and that and then you walk back into the dress room that is the end of the ride. And sometimes in the dressing room, I don't know who put it up, but somebody, maybe it's one of the crazies, put up improv free zone because it was the only place that you could walk in at the dressing room and be like, okay, I can just not be my character right for the second while I grab my comb, while I fix my whatever it is, while I ask Rose Keo to hem my dress. For that second, you could be off, but then you had to, as soon as you opened that door, you were back out there. And, and you were back in that world. It's really, it's like nothing else that anybody's ever done, I'm sure. Um, okay, two things. I'm going to take a pause because we're going to do the food section of our show. I don't know if I told you, but we have a food section of our show. I cannot ask my guests to be creative if I do not stay creative myself every week. And then we're going to talk about the bride. Okay, so this will take all five minutes. Maddie, okay. okay. So every night I cook something. Uh, given with what the circumstances are or what the week is or whatever. This week I happen to be on the keto again because I got to fit into a, something for the Mac Awards, which are next Monday. So, but just because you're on the keto doesn't mean you can't get creative. So the name of this section of our show is Go Ahead, Keep Eating. Are you ready? We're going to do that at the count of three. One, two, three. Go Ahead, Keep Eating. Beautiful. Very good. And that line is from, can anybody tell me? Raging Bull. When, it, when um, um, uh, the brother, when um, Joe Pesci says to Robert De Niro, you get so fat, your stomach is blocking the TV. He's like, what? <laughs> One of my favorite lines. Anyway, so what did I make tonight? I made, I know, does in that beautiful plating, yeah. if I say it for myself, this is one of my best plates ever. I took a picture of it. So I made scallops marinated in sherry, saffron, Ooh. crushed red peppers, lemon and parsley, uh, and with a little bit of garlic. And then I put some lobster bouillon in. There's something called better than bouillon, and it's uh, they, all different flavors, and I love the lobster base one. And um, then what I did is I cooked some of dahlia onions, red peppers, peas, and broccoli in garlic butter, and I put it that on top. With a little bit of bacon, which, yeah, yeah doesn't that look good? It looks delicious. This is all keto. 
I mean, the vegetables are a little high carb, but they're good carbs, so I can have that. And uh, I, and then for a salad, because of course my Italian friends were on a nice burrata Ooh. Ooh. on red leaf lettuce with cherry tomatoes, balsamic vinegar, and a rosemary infused olive oil. How beautiful is that? With a little onion salt. Isn't that pretty? Yeah, I love that. Yeah. And then, of course, because I'm on the keto, I love dessert. But I, I cannot say enough about these. These are Atkins break, they call breakaway bars. So they taste just like Kit Kats, except they are super low carb. So nobody pays me to say anything. I, I just promo what I love. And that's it. That is my promo. Okay. Leo, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt. Let's go back to the bride, the pictures that you had up there. So, D, this is something you're working on. Tell me about this. Um, so, the bride, we created that last year and we workshopped it at Stages in Houston and it was a huge hit. So, like, you and Rick wrote this as well? I mean, I have to say that Rick really wrote it. Um, you know, and I, I feel like I, I contributed a lot to it. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, the structure and the way this play came together was so beautiful and it was such a collaboration with Ken McLaughlin, um, the artistic director in stages, um, Todd Molesky, who is, um, he is just an incredible creative down in Houston. He runs the theater, but when I'm there, he's my stage manager. And um, we had come up with this concept several years ago. Stages had approached us to create our own show, create a show for me. And some ideas got tossed around, and then some idea came up of me being a bride. And Ricky and I had just gotten married, and the artistic director was like, what if the character was a bride? I'm like, well, I have a lot of experience, <laughs> you know, playing a bride. And I just went through planning my wedding, a bride of a certain age, and wow. um, we all agreed upon it, and, and the writing started. And then Ricky kind of just took off with it and he started writing and he started coming up with some really wild and fun ideas and the connectivity of all the the stories and it just it was so fun to be working with him and then we went to Palm Springs to reveal our first draft of the script to wow. meet the team and um, I read the script for them out loud the first time and they loved it and was it a one person show yeah yeah and it was such a cool experience because you know i i love to work with the audience so i wanted to involve that which are in the show but it's very theatrical it's got a it's funny it's sentimental you know it's um it's just a really beautiful piece of theater and people it really resonated with people wow. and i was so nervous about that maria because you know people fall in love with you as a certain character and when you have to kind of go back out and become something else for them um, yeah. it's always an intimidating step for me but the material that Ricky wrote and the way he worked with the creative team at Stages it was such a it was such a beautiful collaboration and we created something so incredible Rick when did you start writing I, I you know like that's a lot of writing that you Thursday you know? Thursday Thursday wow so then you're doing really well then uh, no you know what happened was uh, you know be careful what you what you say out loud because yeah. you know I kept telling her, you know, you should have your own show. You should do your own show. You should have your own show. And she's like, well, why don't you just write me one? And I'm like, yeah, well, I, well, I, well, I just will. Go ahead. <laughs> I love it. And I'm like, now what? Big mouth, you know. But we had, we had, a, we had a kernel of an idea, and you'll appreciate this, because the, the kernel of the idea that took off was we did had a whole bit about Sunday supper. The, the, the idea of the Sunday supper. You knew where you were going to be. Yeah. At two o'clock on Sunday, you knew you were going to be at Nana's house for Sunday. Absolutely. And that idea, that feeling that we thought, this might be something that people can relate to, whether you're Italian or not. We all grew up with that book. I miss that. I miss that. Yeah. And, and we realized that people are, a lot of people were missing that, that whatever it was for their family. And as we started to expand the piece it kept going back to that thing so and and when we and when it was finally up and running i can't tell you how many people were like 
uh, of all of all of, of every ethnic background you can imagine coming up afterwards going i'm not italian but i was at my grandma's house on sunday and blah 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 blah, blah and they're telling stories so it resonated on a level that we weren't even thinking about wow you can only write from your own you know you can only write from what you know your own experience uh and then you know the other great thing was we started to kind of stretch the boundaries of what what our own limitations were like we, we're, we were used to doing things a certain way but this theater was so encouraging and every ridiculous notion that we pitched they were like yeah we can do that we can execute that really yeah and they were really just on board for oh you need a projection of a you know a dinosaur chair you need to you need to uh have a game show in the middle of the thing that as as a fantasy sequence yeah we can do that and once once the uh once the stops were off, it was just like, well, we're, we're just going to take this thing to the next level. And oh, wow. Yeah. It, just, it just was like an explosion on stage. Of just, and, one, well, and one amazing actor in the middle of I it. I know. I know. I'm a big fan of Dee's work. Uh, D- Denise, there was an, a thing that I, I came to see you in. You played a hairdresser. I yeah, Sheer remember. Madness. <laughs> yes. Sheer Madness. I learned that show in 48 hours, Maria. Really? Yeah, because so I had been cast as in the Lily Tomlin project in Houston, Search for Signs of Intelligent Life in the New Universe. Which I love, I love that show. It was such a great experience. And then David Gersten had called me, and he was working with the team for Sheer Madness in New York, and he's like, "I think you would be great as this character." And I, of course, looked at my calendar, and I'm like, "Oh my god, I just committed to go to Houston." the Lily Tomlin play and like I can't not do that play but I also would love to get an off-Broadway contract you know in New York City at New World Stages doing Sheer Madness because I'd always wanted to do the show you know from Boston I never ran forever it's probably still running for all we yeah so then Stages was wonderful the theater that we work in in Houston and they said well we'll bring it in next season like we'll actually secure the rights and we'll do it we would love to do it it ran here years ago and i was doing late night shortly thereafter we had never entered into rehearsals ever in houston they had made the announcement that the show was happening and david gersten called me and he said one of the girls in the show has had an emergency and they need somebody to fill in for this role in new york for a couple oh of my nights. god have you started rehearsal in houston and i was like no and he's like i'm going to ask you that question again <laughs> have you started rehearsal in Houston? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, so you could learn the lines and be ready to go in like 48 hours. I was like, ah, and he's like, yeah, you can get to it. And, um, so I learned the lines and then so many people, thanks for coming, you know, like, Oh, I loved it. I loved it. You were great. I I mean, I, that would, I think I did two shows in New York and, I caught it. In different endings. What a great show that was. Oh, and, great and they, show, and you were wonderful. I, I'm not just saying that. You were wonderful. I had a great time. Another interactive, fun experience. I'm very blessed, Maria. Yeah, well, you know, blessed is one part of it, for sure. You know, but you have to, when you are blessed with something, you have to be able to take the reins and say, I I take this challenge, and I, I honor whatever the universe gives you. There's a lot of times when we see things and we're like, I can't, I just can't do it right now. Or I, I'm not, I'm not ready or I don't want to, whatever it is. But you, both of you, when something comes your way, you say yes. And like, I remember that Tina Fey in her book, which I loved, it's called Bossy Pants. It's a great book. It's about her career. But she says, say yes and then figure it out later. That's what she did. Like she would be like, I'm um, sure. Like the like phone would ring and she'd be like, uh, yeah, I can do that. I can write that script. And then she'd be like, how am I going to do that? I have this other. She was just like, just say yes and then figure it out. So lots of times she'd have like three projects going, but she never regretted it afterwards. You know, and that I, I think is part of this business. It's the stressful part of it. But the joy is that we get to be in our bodies, have the experiences we have and, and, and just share our light with other people. And they don't forget it. No, you know, yeah. Lynn Portis was somebody, you know, like I've met so many great friends and, and ended up getting to like really create some beautiful work with all of them. Um, 
and continue to. And I love that we all think of each other. If there's something where we all fit in, yeah. um, you know, and, and saying yes, saying yes is a huge thing. I mean, I just said yes to something else. And then three days later, I panic. I'm like, I can't do that. That's I know, but I'm still going to do it because at this point, you know, why not? I know it's true. And, and when you, when you do work and you feel like it resonates, like for me, um, you know, what was interesting, this run for me in Houston is the Irish show was such a huge success, but 50% of the audience that came to see me in the bride never saw me as sister. Really? The shows were feeding themselves too. You know, it placed to a totally different audience. And, uh, how, how many does that theater hold? There's three theaters within the actual stages space. Oh, so, cool. Yeah. Um, and they range from 200 to eight. Wow. Yeah. It's pretty, awesome. it's a pretty awesome space. I mean, I'm super grateful that I stumbled this, you know, I mean, talk about getting a play. It's, it's. That's incredible. And, 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 and like to bring it to Boston, which is, you know, like after you produce these shows, you hope that, you know, maybe you'll get a chance to do it again. Some of them just stay where they are. You know that. And they're, it was a wonderful experience, but the bride definitely, it's a universal message. It really resonated with a lot of people. So a lot of other theaters have kind of reached out and Norwell Mass, the company theater in Norwell Mass on November, I mean, November, May 11th and 12th. That's our first tour out of Houston with the bride. So, okay, May 11th, I'm going to write this down because, you know, we have a lot of friends in Boston. May 11th. Yeah, we'll just stay weekend. Yeah. And 12th, where is it? At Norwell? The company Theater in Norwell, Mass. And they're awesome, Maria. They're, you wow. know, they're just, they're like message aligns completely with the stages, folks, and the two theaters are working together to produce it. So yeah. it's really exciting. Well, will you guys do me a favor? If there's a, some kind of a flyer with some kind of a link yeah. or any information, Will you send it to me and I'll post it on my wall yes. uh, or my, my personal page and this page? Because we have so, as you know, we have so many friends in Boston. My whole family's there. They would love this it. This is Boston. I mean, like these characters are all loosely based off of my family. It's loosely based off of our wedding day and what it was like to, you know, have, you know, we don't reference the Tony and Tina's, but like, you know, Maria, all of a sudden I'm going to get married and now... Ricky comes from a big giant Italian family and I do too. So are we doing the chicken dance in a tent at my parents' front lawn for our wedding? What are we talking about? <laughs> right. What are the boundaries of our wedding? Right. Oh my God, that's hysterical. At that point in your life, you already know the mental, you know. I mean, Tony and Tina's was my life. It wasn't too fun. I happen to be a great actress, but you know, that wasn't a big stretch for me. Right, right. Oh, I love that. And Rick, your family's from Italy, right? My, uh, my my father is, yeah, my father was uh, came to this country when he was 21. My mother is Italian, but she's first uh, uh, first generation. Wow. And, uh, yeah, and they, uh, our families came together, and it was, we, we had an interesting uh, sort of discovery. We, uh, we we took a trip to Italy when we, you know, we I know, I saw that on the Facebook. That was so beautiful. So I said, you know, we're going and we're going to go see my family uh, in Abruzzi and we should maybe try to see, you know, like where your people come from. Well, turns out where her people come from is about 15 minutes away from where my people come. I'm like, yeah, we're probably third cousins. We probably, we, we should probably never do a DNA test. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, my cousin, good. Rina, who comes on the show every week, she's from, her, her father is Abruzzese. So, uh, and I, we have so many Abruzzese friends. I'm a big fan of the Abruzzese. Yes. I think the best food in Italy is from Abruzzi. Oh, 100%. Yeah, I agree. All right. Unbelievable. This hour flew by. We're at Thanks the end of the show. Us. What a treat to catch up with you. Oh, my God. I've wanted to have you guys on for the longest time. Um, now, this is what I ask our guests to do every time the show ends. I want you both to leave because most of the people that watch this show are also creative people in some way, whether they're chefs, visual artists, actors themselves, singers. Let's leave them with some words of encouragement about staying creative. So who wants to go first? <laughs> We're like, what? You, what go. you go. Oh, 
What's the assignment again, Maria? Wait, wait, uh, what what words of encouragement would you give our listeners about staying creative? Oh, I think you and, just and, and how do you stay in the game? I don't know. Well, look, uh, I, you know, here's from my experience, my relationships they they became so important to me. You know, I always say, like, in particular to the younger generation, like, you got to want to be in the room with people for a really long time. It, it, you know, teching and this is a lot of hours. So, you know, when it comes right down to it, if you're a resume and you're as talented as the person next to you, you know, it's do you want to spend time in that room with the person? And your reputation and how you conduct yourself is so important. We can all make mistakes. I mean, early on, I can't even tell you. I, I could probably go back and, but you can't. You just got to keep going and believe in yourself and believe in the art. And it is difficult when art and business collide. Mm. As we've learned, you know, um, you got to love theater. You know, you gotta, I think you got to love being an artist. And yeah, you have to want to be the ball, you know, like. Find people to talk to about it. And, you know, find people that uplift you and help and support your career. And say yes. Say That's, yes. You know, find the people that say yes for you and to you, and you know, and hang on to them. Yeah, absolutely. You know, hang on to your people because it's a journey, and it's not necessarily always about the performance. It's about everything leading up to it too. I love that. I love that, Rick. What do you think? Uh, say what you mean and mean what you say. You know, you, you're only as good as your word. And, and in this business, you know, like like Dee said, you know, you, you really want to have to be, you're going to have to be in a room with somebody for a long time. And it's really hard, you know, to, to open yourself up and to have that trust and know mm -hmm. that you can fall on your face and the person sitting across from you or next to you is not going to yeah. burst out laughing, but, you know, help you, you know, through a moment or that's that's what it's all about. You know. Yeah, absolutely. When you're, afraid, when you're not afraid to fail, that's when that's when the good stuff comes out. When yeah. You're willing, when you're willing to fall flat on your face, that's when the magic happens. Yeah, it's not the it's not an easy business to be in. Anybody that's in it will tell you to be a creative person and and for, and just keep going is it that's all a labor of love. And take care of your skin. Moisturize, for God's sake. I do. I use the best stuff on the planet, and I sell no, it. Organic and fields. Organ and fields. I can't say enough about it. Anybody that knows me. So, I agree. All right. I can't thank you both enough. I love you guys, and I appreciate you, you taking time to come on. Now, how many? How long have you been married now? 47. Is it a year yet? I think we're almost at two. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. We don't even know what our anniversary is. It's not important. Coming up on three. It, it, it's just so wild to me how it all just it happens, and here I we are. It. And I'm grateful. And I just when I see your shirt, it just takes me back. I know I had to wear it tonight. I still have it. <laughs> to me, I it's, keep, it's I keep it on the bottom of the drawer just in case I ever need it. Nice, nice, nice. That's a nice shirt. Nice shirt. Over I recently, I recently saw um, Richie. Richie, Remember Richie and uh, oh Carol, his wife Carol, on the street. Oh my god, that's great! Oh my god, so many stories. I, there are so okay. many stories. I love you guys, and I'm so glad that we got to do this. Love and you um, and you know, I'm gonna. We had some tech problems with it running on my page, but hopefully, it'll get fixed. We'll put it on the page. I'm gonna put it on the Tony and Tina page, and feel free to share it wherever you guys want. Thanks. And it's also on YouTube, so it'll be yes. on our, What's the Story with Maria. Uh, it's episode 343. So you'll you'll see it, and it, it, soon it'll be up there, and then you'll be able to share it. Also, folks, this goes live, I mean, uh, the, into podcasts and Spotify, Spreaker, and iHeartRadio within 12 hours. That's great. 343. Yeah. Amazing. Congratulations. Uh, pretty cool, right? Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Yeah, we're happy. So thank you, Leo Rodriguez, who runs our show and is an yeah, amazing you, tech, our tech uh, assistant and stage manager. We love you, Leo. We love everybody out there. Please come back every Tuesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern. We love and appreciate you. Good night. Good night.